The majority of Christians believe that Jesus is coming back to rapture his church. The only problem is most people can't agree on when that's going to happen. That's what we're talking about today. Stick around. We're going to get right into it. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Ted Shuttlesworth Jr., and I'm giving you truth for life. Thanks so much for watching again today. And listen, if you appreciate my channel and you're loving these videos, I want you to subscribe. I have new videos coming out every single Tuesday. So today we're asking the question, when is Jesus coming back? Sadly, many Christians cannot agree on when Jesus will rapture his church. Today, we just want to deal with the two main views that are held by the majority of Christians. These two views are the pre-tribulation and post tribulation rapture. Many Christians believe that Jesus Christ will come before the tribulation ever begins and rapture his church from the earth. Other Christians believe that Jesus will allow the church to go through all seven years of the tribulation and then at the end of those seven years come and rapture his church at that point. Today I want to give you three reasons with an acronym PRE that will help you remember why I believe that Jesus will rapture his church before the tribulation ever begins. The first is the place of the church in the book of Revelation. In chapters 1 through 3, the church is specifically mentioned 19 times. And again, in chapter 22, the church is mentioned. But during chapters 4 through 19, when the tribulation is taking place and being described, the church is never mentioned one time. Isn't it interesting to you that in the most damning moments on the earth, God's prized possession, his own body, his church, church. If they were on the earth, why is there nothing in the Bible telling us how to navigate our way through the most hellish experience that will ever touch the earth? I believe it's because the church will not be here to experience those things. Number two is the restrainer. And the Bible says that the Antichrist or the man of lawlessness cannot be revealed to do what he is called to do until the one who is restraining him is removed. There's been a lot of speculation over the years as to who is the one that is restraining the Antichrist. But the only one that makes scriptural sense is the church of God filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Why is that? Because we as the church carry Christ's authority and his power over the spirit of Antichrist. It would only make sense that in order for him to do his work, we would have to be out of the way. And number three is exemption from divine wrath. If you look all the way through the Bible, God never expected his people to experience his wrath. Anybody that was in divine covenant with God was always exempted from wrath when it came to the earth. Look all the way back to Noah and the great flood. The Bible tells us that Noah and his entire family were safely in the ark before one drop of rain fell. They were completely exempted from the wrath God put onto the earth. Look at Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says God was getting ready to rain down fire from heaven. But two angels came into those twin cities just to get Lot and his family. The Bible tells us that while Lot and his family were tarrying in the city, the angels actually had to grab them and to rapture them or to to rush them out of the city so that God could release his judgment on the earth. Finally, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds, Jesus makes this analogy. He sees a field that is filled with wheat, that is believers, and weeds, that is unbelievers, growing together. And he said, we can't go in and tear out the weeds to burn them because it will destroy the wheat while it's still there. At the time of harvest, they harvested the wheat and separated the weeds into two different piles. And at that time of separation, the wheat was taken into the barn or put in heaven and the weeds were placed into a fire to be burned, which is the tribulation and ultimately in hell. This is just another proof that God's people are not appointed to experience his wrath. 
And that's why we believe that Jesus Christ will come and rapture his church before the tribulation ever begins. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching again today. Listen, if you have any questions or comments regarding the time of the tribulation or this subject that we're talking about, please put them in the comments below. I'm also going to put a couple of books that I really think that you would enjoy regarding end times prophecy in the description as well. Listen, until next time, don't forget that goodness and mercy are following you for the rest of your life. I'll see you next week.